Today we're turning a tree just like this one into a mountain bike jump with some very heavy constraints. Uh, no power tools, no screws or nails, no glue, and no killing the tree. So yeah, everything we do is going to be fueled by our body's calories, nothing else. But why do this? <laughs> well, lately I feel like for the most part I've been behaving like a spoiled brat. Hey daddy, I want a golden goose. Here we go again. I buy whatever dimensional cedar I need with zero effort. I plow down most areas with a skid steer with virtually no care for the smaller vegetation or the mess I leave behind. And then I slap it all together using screws and metal lag bolts, which have no business being in the middle of the woods because when things like this rot, everything I put into it is going to be littering the forest floor. It sort of feels like I just industrialized trail building for myself where I was building as much as possible, as fast as possible. And that's not what I wanted it to be at all. So this week, let's slow down. Let's respect the forest that lets us do this. And let's build a kicker. The first hurdle for this project was not killing a tree in the process, which isn't as simple as going out and finding a dead tree. Not only does a dead tree have rot, but working dry wood by hand is extremely challenging. So in this case, the greener the tree, the better. But how do you get enough green wood for a project without killing the tree? Well, first off, you have to do a buttload of planning. And luckily my buddy Nate volunteered his whole week to help me bring this project to fruition. So after nearly four hours of planning and talking out our ideas, I drew up a sketch of our plan and Nate wrote down a very detailed cut list for all the pieces we were going to need. Now Nate is a huge proponent of doing things by hand and has a lot of experience building structures without nails or screws. Not only that though, Nate had already solved the mystery on how we could get enough green wood without killing a tree. And it's pretty dang simple. Most trees grow and split at a certain point. These points are known as the crotch of a tree. So if we simply go to the crotch of the tree and take one side of it, the tree can go on surviving, albeit a bit lopsided, but it's much, much better than dead. So that was the plan and we found the perfect ash tree to do it on. It's, out, it's going, it's going. Yep, come down. Here it comes, perfect. Wow, that's beautiful. Look at that. <laughs> nice job, dude. You'd be correct in assuming that was probably one of the more dangerous ways to go about doing that. So I highly advise you not to copy us. But either way, with our cut list handy, we were able to saw everything to length there on the spot and start carrying it back to the house. These are heavy. The ash tree gave us all the lumber we'd need for the structure of the ramp, but we still needed some wood for the decking. So for that, we used some cedars I had pulled aside from several months ago during one of my skid steer clearings. After gathering those, we had everything we needed to start the project. But first, Nate wanted to split the main log we were going to use for the arc of the ramp to make sure it was going to be usable. Okay. We really needed this piece to split nicely because of all the parts in this build, a bent piece like this would be the hardest to find again. Lucky for us, it split really well. So assuming the rest that were straight would probably follow suit, we packed everything up and continued the build over at Nate's. I started in on cutting our cedar exactly to size for the decking and Nate started cracking open the next log for the bottom board. This piece will end up being the support boards on the sides. And since they are pretty generic two x four dimensions, Nate started shaping them up with the ax. And while he did that, I finished cutting the decking and started in on cleaning them up by shaving the bark off with the draw knife. I cracked a pot. I'm gonna get yelled at now. Once I had the cedar debarked and was done breaking pots, we needed to flatten one side of the decking so the ramp would be smooth. Nate and I had a theme going as well where we got the monotonous tasks done first, and since there were 15 decking pieces that needed to be done, this was number one on the agenda. we finished 
finished flattening the decking, we moved on to shaping the structural pieces. The name of the game here is just trying to flatten and square off the sides enough so they fit together relatively snug. And just like that, we can finally start to see this thing taking shape. Now, if we were using screws, we could put this thing together and be done, but <laughs> we're not using screws, nails, or glue. So everything has to fit together using wood joinery, specifically round mortise and tenon joints. They are pretty simple to make though. Basically, it's just two parts, a male and female end. To make the male end, we'll mark off a circle on the end of our decking or support piece. Then we take an ax, chop it down to the circle and roughly etch out the length. After that, you shave off the finishing diameter with a draw knife, checking often that you haven't shaved off more than you intended to. Once we get it shaved off to the desired length, then you flip it over and repeat on the opposite side. To make the female ends, you simply drill out the same diameter that you shaved off for your male end. The only tricky part about drilling by hand is keeping straight, but that just requires you to step back every now and then to make sure you're still in line. Other than that, it's pretty much just a big workout. And once I had most of the holes drilled out on the structural pieces and Nate had finished shaping a few pegs, including the ones on the arches, we couldn't resist putting this thing together to see what we had. And yes, I know what this looks like. This definitely looks like exactly what you think it looks like. So you don't need to tell me what you think it looks like because I know what it looks like. <laughs> I'm gonna come clean right now. This was not the first time trying to put this thing together, but eventually it all finally cooperated and we could see our hard work was actually paying off because this thing looked awesome, but we weren't out of the woods yet. Nate still needed to carve out all the pegs for the decking and I needed to drill all the holes for the decking. So I'm gonna condense what took two days into about 50 seconds. <laughs> Once I had all the holes drilled, I went ahead and put the jump partially together so I could measure and cut the back brace pieces. Since this is the last piece we have to make, I wanna show you guys just how much time and care each piece of this project got and why I'm such a huge fan of this. When you're working by hand, you really can't rush things, even if you want to. Your tools can only go as fast as your body can, which turns every action in the project into an exercise, not only for your body, but also for your mind. You have to have muscle, cardio, and patience for this sort of work, which makes for a pretty stress-free environment. And honestly, I feel like everyone could benefit from all of those things. Not only that, but the sounds that come out of these tools are absolutely therapeutic. Anyway, once I had these cut to size and Nate had the decking all finished up, we could finally put this thing together for real. During assembly, we opted to coat all the holes and pegs with a layer of tongue oil to hopefully help with rot prevention. In its purest form, tongue oil is completely non-toxic, eco-friendly, and food safe. So we pretty much smothered everything in the stuff. Some 
of you probably didn't realize we had to peg the pegs, or else this whole thing would just come undone. But in the grand scheme of things, carving out all the pegs didn't take too long, and honestly, drilling all the little holes and getting to hammer in the pegs was probably my favorite part in this whole project. After one full week of non-stop work, no power tools, no screws or nails, and no dead trees, it was done. Now, Nate doesn't actually ride bikes, so he had to test this thing out the best way he knew how. <laughs> <How's it feel? laughs> I think we can all assume from Nate's childlike giggles, he approves of the ramp. As for me, I was ready to see how it held up to a bike. This thing is built like a tank. I've seriously never made anything that feels this strong before, and it rides really well too. It's got a bit of a kick to it, but in a good way, and I'm honestly stunned with how good it feels since we just found a random tree with an arc in it. Now the side of my house is not where this is going to stay at, eventually we'll put it in one of the trails, but I hope this ramp is the first of many features we build this way, because it's definitely my favorite so far. Let me know if you like this style building in the comments because I'd love to dive further into the techniques involved with it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you at the next build.